Hey everyone, how's it going? I am Zerakon and I am back once again. Last week I talked about Sony's exclusives coming to PC, but today I want to expand beyond that. I believe that we are reaching a point where exclusives are starting to die off, or at least its influence is diminishing. Microsoft brought their games to Steam of their own volition, and now we see Sony is also bringing their games to PC. This is something that no one would believe would ever happen years ago. However, these companies are seeing a great motivator. Money. They've seen that by putting their games on another platform, they're able to reach out to potential consumers who might not have bought their games because they didn't buy those games on the original platform they released on. Now, I'm not saying that I expect every first-party game to suddenly become multi-plat. It's absurd to think that. And while it's not beneficial to us, I can at least understand that practice. They, those games are made by, uh, by those developers themselves, by the by those companies, you know, like Sony and Microsoft, so they can be the only ones to benefit from it. However, it wouldn't be too far-fetched to expect third-party exclusives to do so. In fact, at this point, they really, they really just should. The games are made by third-party developers, so there's no reason for those games to be locked to certain platforms. Street Fighter V should not have been exclusive to PS4 and PC. Hades should not have been exclusive to Switch and PC. Any future Doom and Elder Scrolls games should not be exclusive to Xbox and PC. Why? Because it limits who can play those games. The very nature of exclusives is anti-consumer, and we as the consumers should not be endorsing this practice. It does not benefit us in any way, shape, or form. Having to buy additional hardware that someone might not want in order to play a game because it is intentionally locked to that platform is entirely anti-consumer. I know that there are people out there who believe that exclusives give value to a console or that Games aren't as special if they aren't exclusive. Why? How does a game being available on multiple platforms so more people can enjoy them devaluing its worth? Is there some hidden magic that removes all blemishes? Does the title of exclusive cause your hardware to spit out diamonds? I'll tell you, there is nothing special. Bloodborne being exclusive does not make it a better game. Valheim being exclusive does not make it a better game. Monster Hunter Rise being an exclusive, or, well, when it was exclusive, did not make it a better game. Being caught up on whether a game is exclusive or not shows that you're not only childish, but also that you do not care about gaming, in which case, you know, you probably shouldn't be here at all. It also shows that you're boasting about having the quote-unquote best box might not be all that you said it was, because other platforms might be able to perform yours, so you need to compensate for that by uh, praising those exclusives that you do have to justify your purchase. But if you're really going to go that far to defend a corporation that does not care about you, at least make sure they're paying you for your efforts. I've seen grown adults re look really immature and insecure about games going to other platforms because they didn't like losing their exclusives. My question for them, did you enjoy the games? If so, how is a game going multiplat stealing that enjoyment that you had? Just play those games. In the future, I would love to see every third party game be on every available platform. Heck, Rust is coming to console soon, so that's great. And I would love to see Valheim once it, you know, gets out of uh, early access, you know, come over to console as well. Because there is controller support and looking at the spec requirements, like, it's not that, it's not, it's not that heavy of a game. So, like, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't come over to uh, console in the future. And I would love to see Hades come to PlayStation and Xbox because I think that is a game that deserves to be played by as many people as possible. And I think that Octopath Traveler is on PS4 now, but if it's not, it, it, it should be brought over. And same for Xbox as well. Damon X Machina had a huge performance boost when brought over to PC from the Switch. And I know that there would be an improved version for PlayStation and Xbox as well, because those are, you know, more powerful uh, platforms than the Switch. And that's a game that should be able to run 160 FPS for that. So do it, Marvelous. And speaking of Marvel... Uh, Ultimate Alliance 3 should be on every platform, not just the Switch. And I could go on and on about this, but I just want to point out that people are not able to enjoy certain games like these because of stupid of stupid paywalls like exclusivity. Now, some people, like I said, you know, they say it gives it value, but if the exclusives are what give a platform its value, then that platform is trash, utter trash. If the hardware cannot stand on its own legs and needs exclusives to shield its flaws and blemishes, that shows that the manufacturers were not doing the best they could do and were pretty much lazy. If someone now, if someone bought a PS5 because of the haptic feedback in the DualSense controller and saw the value in that, I could understand that because that is a feature that 
gives new meaning. It offers a new way to play the games and to be more immersed in the game. If someone bought an Xbox because of Game Pass, because, you know, uh, it offers them a library of games to play on a budget, I can understand that too. Uh, because, you know, especially right now, for example, you know, you might not be able to get every game, you know, purchase every game. However, with Game Pass, you know, if it comes out, I th certain games, you know, on release date, they come out in for retail and digital and whatnot, but it also comes to Game Pass, so you get those games. You don't get to own them or keep them, but you can still play them, and later on, if you want, you can purchase them. Now, if someone bought a Switch because of its portability, that is understandable as well. Like, seriously, before, <laughs> before you know, like, uh, a pandemic world, you know, I could definitely understand, you know, going to college campus, you know, I would say this would be perfect to play because now I'm here, you know, I have like an hour or two between classes. I could play on a Switch, you know, enjoy some console style games right there. Um, so like that's understandable. I bought a PC because I love the freedom that the platform offers. You know, I can play certain games. I can adjust my settings. I can use like all this different stuff. So these features should be the highlights of the systems that allow them to stand up on their own and showcase what they're capable of, not the exclusives. But that will do it for today. Let me know what you think the future of exclusives will be in the comments below. And heck, tell me what some third-party exclusives uh, you, would, you would like to see become multi-plat. So until next time, everyone, I am Zerikhan signing off. Have a good one.